have memories of wanting to start my own garden back when I was in like fourth, fifth, sixth grade, somewhere around there. I actually went out to the garage at my mom's house and got the garden hoe and a shovel and I don't know, some other tools. And I went out in the backyard and my mom's like, um, what are you doing? And I was like, I want to build a garden. And she was like, okay. And so at any rate, I went to town and I dug up all the grass and I tilled up all the dirt and basically had a three foot by five foot plot. And that's where my garden ended. I didn't really get any support or some whatever. And so that's pretty much where it ended. I didn't have seeds, I didn't have soil, I didn't know what to do next. Back in those days, that was the 80s, we were, people, I don't even think computers were a household thing at that time. So, at any rate, that kind of failed. A few years went by and my mom got me some watermelon seeds and I had a little pot and I planted the little watermelon seeds and I got a nice little softball watermelon growing and I was so proud of it and I was tending to it and everything. And then I went on vacation and I told the neighbor, just come in the backyard and make sure it doesn't need water. I come back from vacation and my little watermelon is gone. And I was like, what happened to my watermelon? And then the girl that I had asked to water my plant for me while we were gone says, oh, my brother, he threw it against the wall. I was so mad. So throughout my childhood, I have had the interest and the desire to grow my own food. And when I got into the trucking industry, I really didn't have the outlet or the ability or the wherewithal Prior to trucking, I was in an apartment, and I think I grew an ivory, ivy, and that was it. So as I've been in trucking so many years, I'm kind of to the point where I'm like, what if I can't grow anything? That would be kind of a sad thing, right? But you see people all over the internet growing things. So I just know, in this little truck diving thumb of mine, it might be turning green eventually, maybe. So this experiment that I did in this video was kind of a test to see if I could actually grow something. If I can grow grass and remove the weeds from the top level of our property and actually grow grass and get it to grow, then I just might have a green thumb after all. Last time you saw us, we were trying out our new Cub Cadet Weed Eater on steroids. And we were able to do this section right between the road and the camper before we had to take off and go run our next load. When we returned, we were excited to get to work on our yard. I was on the mission to be able to grow grass. So Michael went ahead and cut down all the weeds. For the most part, we left the weeds just lying where they are to help kind of just go back to the earth. And I took the moment to collect some green for my compost. We did most of the upper area with the Cub Cadet, our weed eater on steroids. And for the most part, it turned out pretty good. It was easy to push on the uneven terrain. Um, and we were able to get most of the area, but we did have some problems with missing spots and having kind of an uneven cut. Plus, we wanted to get the stuff that was cut kind of mulched up. So we splurged and we got a Craftsman self-propelled gasoline lawnmower. It's got the larger wheels, which is easier to push on the uneven terrain. And it also was going to be good for mulching up all of the weeds that we cut down. So Michael was found that it was a lot easier to push that because it helped to navigate over the hills and stuff like that. Michael's mowing the lawn so that we can lay down more grass seed. We bought a 50 pound bag of grass seed. So today while Michael mows, I'm going to go in behind him everywhere we've already cut and lay down the seed. 
we've left some of the weeds in place so that we can basically um, have a ground hole for the seed to catch hold to and dig its little roots down into so that it won't wash away. This next week it's supposed to be more rain but it'll be light rain so it'll be enough to get the seeds embedded and germinating and hopefully go from there. We came a long way but we ain't slowing down we got a strong pace no we ain't losing ground we won't give up and we won't turn around no look at the big wide world we're living in yeah i'll keep running until i discover it well just that little bit of section i did boy oh boy we're gonna need a lot more seed for up on this top one thing that i had read online they said that the tall fescue one seed equals one blade of grass so it's not going to do a lot of spreading so we got to put a lot of seed out in order to make sure that it takes hold and is able to actually grow so i have done the whole 50 pound bag of grass seed in all the area and behind me and in front of me um seeded so the next thing we're going to do to kind of help the seed take hold is we're going to put down a fertilizer and since we have so much weed that we're not going to tear down we're going to try to congregate the bugs and the weeds to certain areas so in the tops portion where the dogs like to play we don't want to have to worry about ticks we don't want our company to come over and get infested with ticks so we're going to put down an insecticide granule into the grass and it's going to kill all the bad pests so to speak now i know some people are against that and you know you do what you have to do at your home that makes you feel comfortable but for us with our dogs there's nothing worse than laying in bed getting checked for ticks and your dog jumps up on the bed and then you find a tick climbing on you it's gross it just ugh. also we're going to lay down a grass fertilizer that will help repel the weeds from this area and then that way the areas that we're not mowing the bugs and the weeds can grow over there as you can see i mean we've got 25 acres of greenness and lots of weeds and those weeds will actually grow to be five feet tall so part of it we're going to keep and part of it we're going to mow down especially where the dogs like to play is where we're going to mow down so the lawn fertilizer we chose to go with this season is a stay green three extreme action lawn care kills and prevents the crabgrass the uh existing weeds which we know dandelions are good weeds but we're gonna just kill them off on the top portion and let them grow everywhere else on our 25 acres. And then it's gonna feed our lawn. So hopefully we can get our grass growing this summer and then we don't have to worry about um, using this in the future for uh, weed control. One of the best reasons why to keep the grass clean and cut down short and the weeds under control is keeps the ticks away, number one. Number two, um, it keeps the pests away so you don't have you don't have to worry about snakes hiding in the grass and then our dog stepping on a copper cotton mouth or a copperhead and uh, you know those are things that we have to concern ourselves with here in this in the Ozarks uh, now that I've got the grass seed down um, we don't have a lot of soil up here it pretty much gets washed down and that's part of the reason why we want to get grass growing and keep some of the weeds at least cut down and under control so that we can start to build our soil and also instead of bagging up all of our grass shed cuttings we're just leaving them down and then that hopefully will turn to soil in time as it degrades and deteriorates and whatever so at any rate it's a process <laughs> Short. Oh, I got some new grass. Thank you. Oh, 
Hey, we got grass. Okay, let me out. Look, we got grass, babe. Look it, we got grass. We got grass. Huh? The weeds? Yeah, the weeds ain't growing up as tall as over there. Yeah, this is nice. This we did good, babe. rate this is the process we took so enjoy the video give it a thumbs up give it a thumbs down if you didn't really like it and um leave me some comments down below and let me know what you would do differently or what you recommend that i should do in the future until next time doodles y'all